Utility Sports Video Today is brought to you by Manscaped, the best company in the world when it comes to men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family's jewels. Manscaped recently launched the ultimate men's hygiene bundle, the Performance Package 4.0. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you from Utility Sports. Use code UTILITY20 for 20% off plus free worldwide shipping at manscaped.com. Again, use code UTILITY20, U-T-I-L-I-T-Y-2-0 at manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping. Does your current hygiene routine leave you with a whole bunch of nicks, cuts, and it overall just a hassle? Well, luckily for you, the Performance Package 4.0 has arrived, and wow, is it a game changer? Manscaped sent us this package so we could share how great it is with you, our awesome viewers. Inside this package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the Weed Whacker nose and hair trimmer, the Crop Preserver ball deodorant, the Crop Reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a free travel bag to hold your goodies. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer is waterproof, has a phenomenal LED light to help you with precise accuracy and is a fourth generation trimmer which features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Additionally, the Weed Whacker nose and hair trimmer is waterproof and does a really good job keeping your skin safe and protected. The Crop Preserver and Ball Deodorant plus Crop Reviver Toner are game changers when it comes to your hygiene routine. Trust me, you'll never look back and your balls will thank you. Performance boxer briefs and the travel bag are free gifts on behalf of Manscaped as part of this awesome performance package 4.0. I love wearing and rocking all of Manscaped's products and you should too. Make sure to check them out using code utility20 on manscaped.com. Remember, this is specifically for our viewers here at Utility Sports. A 20% off discount code plus free shipping when you use the code utility20 at manscaped.com. Yes, 20% off plus free worldwide shipping at manscaped.com when you use code utility20. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Hey there everyone, welcome back to Utility Sports. In today's video, we're gonna be covering the 2022 NFL Draft with another rendition of your guys' favorite thing here on the channel, that is Mock Draft Monday. Super excited to be bringing this rendition of Austin's Mock Draft to the channel. He spends so much time covering these NFL Draft prospects, watching their games, watching the film, restudying the tape, does it all here for us on the channel. NFL Draft Guru Austin, thank you so much for putting your time in. If you guys do appreciate what he does, for the channel make sure to leave a like subscribe as well it would really mean a lot to us and give us your thoughts as well throughout this video there's a lot of opportunities where maybe you won't agree but there's good reasoning as to why maybe you think something compared to why our dra draft guru here austin thinks something as well so austin let's get it started here first overall the jacksonville jaguars you have them going with aiden hutchinson of course your jaguars do need some help in the pass rush area what does aiden hutchinson really bring Aiden Hutchinson, really, really polished pass rusher. He, he's a guy that I get excited about. This is what Jacksonville was hoping Caleb Von Chason was going to develop into. A uh, guy, high upside guy, guy that can consistently generate pressures opposite of Josh Allen, really alleviate some of those double teams that Josh Allen has been seeing in his time in Jacksonville. You know, that's not the case. It, it's not worked out in that regard. Caleb Von Chason can be a rotational pass rusher. Aiden Hutchinson is going to be a star in the league. Um, one of those high risers in the draft and he's been consistent hanging up here in that top five for sure in that top three as well so i love this pick for jacksonville you can really look at him Kayvon thibodeau or evan neal i think all are in play here and i just think that aiden hutchinson would be a really really good fit for this roster they definitely do need to find another guy across from josh allen i know some jaguars fans are gonna be saying why not evan neal perhaps remember you guys have picked 33 as well perhaps there'll be an offensive tackle sitting there for you at the top of the second round that could be really beneficial and still help protect the franchise quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. Pick two, we've got the Detroit Lions here. Of course, a bumpy season, lost a bunch of close games, and now you have them going with Edge Kayvon Thibodeau. 
A lot of people probably think he's worthy of the number one in selection as well. Why do you have him going here second to Detroit? It's crucial for Detroit to fix that front seven. I think that's been a point of emphasis now. Um, they're looking to really overall improve trench play. That does that. I mean, they took Panay Sewell last year. Now they come back to Kayvon Thibodeau, a guy that's got insanely, insanely high uh, potential. I mean, you look at what he brings from a power standpoint, from a speed standpoint, from a, from a bend standpoint. There's a lot of different things you have to like about him as an individual prospect. The Detroit Lions are definitely building something worthy. Um, you know, they have a lot of, of financial backing. They got some, some really good draft capital as well. They're going to capitalize on these couple of picks that they do have in this draft. Kayvon Thibodeau is going to be a really, really productive player for this team. This is a really, really strong defensive class and no surprise to see Aiden Hutchinson, Kayvon Thibodeau, the first two defensive players off the board. It's an edge rich class and that's one of the most important positions in all of football. And we see the Jaguars and Lions taking advantage of that here. Pick three, Houston Texans and their guy falls to him here. That is Evan Neal, the tackle out of Alabama. I know we have some viewers that are gonna be extremely excited about this selection, Austin. Why is he the right selection at this point of Houston's rebuild? Yeah, Houston has to really look at themselves hard in the mirror and, and say, what do we need? I think tackle is, is one of those big, big needs. Uh, you look at a team like Jacksonville, Houston, uh, their offensive line play was pretty poor this season. And Evan Neal is a really, really great building block. I think drafting him allows you to you know, really build for the future. We know that Deshaun Watson is likely going to be traded at some point in time. You're going to add other assets to that. But so selecting a guy like Evan Neal could make a lot of sense for this team. Maybe this is not the exact pick that the Texans fans want to see, but I think it's a necessary step in the right direction for this franchise. The Texans struggled running the football this year, and Evan Neal is going to help you with that. He's athletic, can get into the second level, and he's going to be someone who can be that build-around tackle for you for the long term. I like this a lot for Houston. It's safe, but that's a step that they need to make, like you said. Pick four, the New York Jets here, and you have them going with edge George Karloftis. So three edges in the top four, quite a shakeup from last week when I ran the mock draft, Austin. Why are you opting for George Karloftis here fourth overall to the Jets? Super productive pass rusher, definitely fills a need. I know there are some people that don't believe that the Jets really need any any edge help at all, but I, I think it is something that's you know really noteworthy. Uh, Robert Sala, when he's at his best, has really, really terrific defensive line play. And that's what George Karloftis is going to bring. Really consistent player on tape, a guy that day in, day out, he brings that lunch pail, man. I mean, he is so productive. I mean, you look at his freshman season and then this past season, insane production, a guy that really gets after it, good against the run, really, really good against the run, and also a, a consistent pass rusher that can uh, you know, definitely generate some pressures and sacks. I love this for the Jets. I think that they can really build off of this pick too when we get to their next one. Seeing George Karloft as fourth overall for me, that helps me a lot believe in the New York Jets trajectory, honestly. You look at the Jets defensive line, I know they have a pretty solid group there. Uh, I'm a Jets fan myself, so Jets fans, you have to consider at the edge position, we really have Carl Lawson, and then there's a little bit of questionality behind that. Our interior defensive line plays pretty strong. We still need another edge to really round out the group. George Karloft is the perfect fit here at this point. Moving into pick five now. We're staying in New York with the Giants and Ike Mekwanu is the pick. I know Giants fans have been preaching and praying for offensive tackle play. Ike Mekwanu, he's a special breed. What does he bring? Yeah, this is a new era for this New York Giants team. I think it's really crucial that they focus on that offensive line. They've already, you know, really addressed that with some of the higher picks like an Andrew Thomas. I think on the other side, you, you select a guy like Ike Mekwanu, really good fit. You know, I, when you look at it at the end of the day, Saquon Barkley really needs to have a productive season next year. That's going to help Daniel Jones. And I mean, this really helps out both in the run and the pass game. But where Eichem is really special is in that run game. I think we should see a really, really nice bounce back season for Saquon Barkley next season. Definitely going to be touching that thousand yards uh, on the ground. Uh, I think this is a really, really good sign for the New York Giants. It should really instill hope for this team. They're, they're definitely going to be improved next year. Most definitely, the Giants were one of the worst teams this year when it came to average yards per play. And a lot of that has to do with the trench play offensively. Ike Mekwanu severely helps the floor of this team. And I think also could raise the ceiling long-term if he becomes what I think a lot of people are projecting him to be. Moving into pick six, Carolina Panthers here. And you got their first quarterback going off the board to Carolina. Of course, they've been QB central with all the guys going through there. Matt Corral, what does he bring to Carolina? 
you look at the Carolina Panthers, this is a need. I, I think you have to look at that quarterback spot. Um, I think they were quick to realize that they had made a mistake with Sam Darnold. Uh, and we saw that lack of confidence from the coaching staff in Sam Darnold. Maybe he can have a bounce back year next year. But I just, I think long term, that's not the answer. And they're going to address it while they're still up at this part of the draft. Um, it's tough to come by quarterbacks, obviously, when you look at the draft and and they get their, you know, they're the first team that really gets a, a true shot at one here. Matt Corral, he is going to be a really, really good player for this team. Um, you know, really can work out of the RPO, uh, good arm, a pretty good athlete as well, underrated athlete it, 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 with that. But looking at Matt Corral, I think he is going to give this team a, kind of the missing element that they had, a, a guy that can actually take off and run. Um, and I think it's going to be dangerous when you look at the weapons that Carolina is kind of building. Here you have Christian McCaffrey could be on the trade block. Uh, DJ Moore is another guy that is just a rising star in the league. Uh, you know, the pieces are there for Matt Corral to succeed. Uh, gets a really good opportunity under Matt Rule. Of course, the Panthers team store is going to have to get ready to start selling some of those Corral line of Panthers t-shirts that I'm sure would be in production the moment he gets drafted there. Pick seven now. We got the New York Giants here. And this is a reminder to everyone that we are sponsored by Icer Brands. They're sending us free apparel each and every month. This month, it is a New York Giants quarter zip, very nice fleece pullover sweater. Phenomenal. Giants fans, you want this. To be entered for it, you have to be subscribed, leave a like, and also comment on today's video. It could be anything from a pullover giveaway or a quarter zip giveaway or anything just about the New York Giants in general. Just let us know in the comment section so you can get entered for it. Now, Austin, you're going with Derek Stingley here, the cornerback out of LSU. Fell a little bit on your board compared to where you've had him historically. What's the reasoning? Yeah, I, I think injuries play a part in it. I definitely think that is taken into consideration. Now, this is not what I would do. I, I think he's he's a better player than being selected at seven. And, you know, the New York Giants fans are going to be like, ah, I feel pretty good about our secondary. But when you have a player as talented as Derek Stingley fall to you at number seven, they are going to take advantage of it. This is a new regime. Uh, this is a new mindset. So I think drafting for value here makes a lot of sense considering how talented he is. He could be a lockdown corner in this league for a very, very long time. Tremendous athlete, great cover guy. Um, you know, I love the total package that he brings, uh, you know, from a premium position. Really tough to come by later on in the draft. Uh, there's going to be a run on corners, and, and here it is. It's starting with the New York Giants. I love that you brought up the new regime because when you look at G new GM Joe Shane, who came in from Buffalo, they love to draft athletes there, and Derek Stingley is a phenomenal aspect of that. He's exactly what that kind of fit is. When you look at what they drafted with Tredavious White, Tremaine Edmonds, for example, uh, Ed Oliver up the middle. They love athletic guys. Joe Shane's going to look at athletes in this class, and Derek Stingley, one of the premier athletes available at pick seven. Moving into pick eight, we got the Atlanta Falcons here, and another quarterback goes off the board. Arthur Smith, of course, has stated that he wants to keep Matt Ryan around. Perhaps that's a little bit of uh, smoke, trying to get some trade offers for the veteran QB. Uh, and either way, Kenny Pickett could sit a year behind Matt Ryan. What's really the emphasis here for Atlanta? Yeah, I look at it from the perspective of Atlanta is going to need a long-term option on the roster. Currently is not there. Matt Ryan, I don't know if I fully buy into the whole idea. I think you might be right. It's really trying to elevate some, some trade value. There are some playoff-ready teams that need a quarterback. I think he probably gets moved in the offseason. Therefore, opening up the door for a quarterback like Kenny Pickett to, to you know, potentially be selected. Kenny Pickett, really, you know, underrated athlete as well, kind of like Matt Corral. He's got the prototyp prototypical frame. Um, you know, some people are worried about his late blossoming uh, season at Pitt, but I'm, I'm not so much worried about it. I'm looking at what's on the tape. What What is he showing me right now? And he's proven he can be a quality NFL starter. That's what the Falcons are getting here with this pick. Uh, you know, is this guy going to be, uh, you know, a lock to be a pro bowler? We don't know that at this point, but I think he brings exactly the requisite skill set you need to succeed in an NFL offense. Arthur Smith is definitely going to maximize Kenny Pickett. Right. When you look at one of the uh, most recent one year wonders, uh, supposedly at the quarterback position in college, it was Joe Burrow, who's currently leading the Cincinnati Bengals to at least a Super Bowl appearance. Of course, he's going to try and win one. Kenny Pickett maybe doesn't have that ceiling. But we'll see. He is a very good pickup here for the Atlanta Falcons. Sliding into pick nine, the Denver Broncos here go with interior defensive lineman DeMarvin Leal. He's been a guy who's been all over the board here throughout our mock draft process. I feel like he's one of the most difficult players to really pin down throughout this process. What does he bring here to Denver? 
you know, I like this for, for Denver, you know, run a lot of different fronts. Uh, a guy that can can be an edge. He can be an interior defensive lineman. There's so much that you can do with him. He's a tremendous athlete as well. Uh, I, I think that the skill set is there to do a lot of different things for this team. Denver will be looking for some versatility along that defensive line. That's exactly what he is filling. Uh, I love this for the Denver Broncos. They continue to build a really, really nice defense there uh, under, under George Payton. So I love this for them. I think this is a good selection. And like you said, it's really tough to figure out where his value lies. Uh, you know, amongst league circles, it, it really varies on what people think of him as a prospect. At one point in time, people thought he was a top five guy. Now people think he might be, you know, uh, late 20s is kind of the value. So all over the board, but I do like him here uh, for the Denver Broncos. The best thing about the NFL draft is it takes one team to love a guy to throw everything up in the air when it comes to the mock draft process. Moving into pick 10, the New York Jets here, and this is phenomenal value. And as a Jets fan, I can't help but smile seeing this. Notre Dame fighting Irish safety, Kyle Hamilton is the selection 10th overall. I think this is a dream come true for the New York Jets. Break down how this all came to fruition. And also, is he a better player than Jamal Adams on day one of his NFL career? Uh, he should be. He's a, he's a much better cover guy coming out than Jamal Adams was. Uh, when you look at it from the from the viewpoint of, well, maybe they actually could have selected him at four. This was more strategic because George Karloftis very well could have not been here at, at this point. But considering you know what teams need and the overall value of a position like safety, we've seen some really, really good players drop. Um, you know, Jamal Adams was an example. Shouldn't have fell that far to six. And then you look at uh, Derwin James as well, another tremendous safety. Just because he was a safety, fell all the way down. Was it warranted? No, it was not. But I look at Kyle Hamilton, that that could be the same issue. Really, really talented safety, diverse skill set, tremendous player, probably a, a top three, potentially four player in the class uh, from what he actually brings from his position. Love this for the Jets. It fills a need. It's great value. This is the ideal situation for them. This is a really good uh, outcome here for the New York Jets. So far in two drafts, Joe Douglas has spent three first round picks on offensive players. Changes the tide here, goes with two defensive guys in the first round. This is a phenomenal outcome for me and the New York Jets. I love the way that you went about this mock draft for my New York Jets. Moving into pick 11, Washington football team here. And we got our third quarterback off the board already. I know some are gonna be critical about this, deeming it a weak quarterback class. But this happens every single year. QBs kind of get pushed up the board, especially as we get closer to pro days, combine, all that good stuff. Quarterbacks start to climb. Malik Willis, what does he offer? Yeah, it's amazing when you look at it, historically speaking, quarterbacks always get pushed up. We have so much data on this and, and we can reflect back on what thoughts were about the QB classes in the past. And, and once again, this is going to be a class that players get pushed up the board, You know, whether it's warranted or not. Quarterback's the premium position in the league. You, you got to have one to win. Some teams are willing to take chances in that first round rather than waiting. So that's that's why you see a guy like Malik Willis. We look at guys like Lamar Jackson in the past. Uh, they were very overly critical on his ability to throw the football. But when you're picking here with that third quarterback, uh, you look at his skill set from the idea of he is a tremendous, tremendous runner. Super, super great at that. Um, and if we look at Lamar Jackson, if he were to be entered in this draft class, kind of knowing what we know, obviously he would be a much, much higher selection uh, than, you know, what he was. He ended up being picked 32. And I think the same could almost happen with Malik Willis, Willis. not as good of a, an overall athlete as a Lamar Jackson, but uh, really possesses a lot of the same skills. Right. When you look at the hindsight, uh, it's always 2020 and Lamar Jackson would have been the first overall pick. More than likely him and Josh Allen, those are one, two in that class with the hindsight. And here Malik Willis could be one of those guys that when it's all said and done, we look back at and say, wow, did he really go outside the top 10? Here Washington takes a stab on him and it could really, really pay off. Moving into pick 12, Minnesota Vikings here going with cornerback Sauce Gardner. Of course, new GM there. They're still looking at head coach candidates at the time we're recording this. And a lot can change throughout this process depending on who they do hire. But I think right now you're just targeting the weakest position on this roster. Is that the case? Yeah, you have to go corner if you are the Minnesota Vikings. I know Viking fans have some fatigue from taking corners in our, our mock drafts, but they also have some fatigue from seeing corners constantly selected in that first round. Uh, I, I don't think they're going to change off of that. I know it's a new regime, but you have to address what's really key in the roster. And they, they're getting a really great player here. We are not reaching with Ahmad Gardner. 
Uh, this is around where he should be, you know, in the in the teens, uh, just with how talented he's been. A great run at Cincinnati. Big, big reason why they were so successful this year. He was able to lock down one part of the field. Didn't allow touchdowns. A tremendous cover corner. Love this for the Vikings. Of course, their new GM Adolfo Mensah is going to have a little bit of self-confidence about him too. Just because a former regime has failed to fill in that cornerback position doesn't mean he's not going to be confident in himself to make the right selection. And I think Ahmad Gardner would be that for the Minnesota Vikings. I think he's the perfect guy for what they need on that roster. And now as we transition to the Cleveland Browns, wide receiver Traylon Burks, first wide out off the board. He's been a consistent first round player for us, but now he's starting to take steps up towards that top 10, Austin. Cleveland, what are they getting in him? Yeah, watch out. Traylon Burks, the, the hype is real on him. I, I'm buying into it. He's really, really good after the catch. Great catch radius, 6'3 frame, got the long speed. Uh, honestly, that you're kind of looking at that whole total package. Uh, his name kind of gets overshadowed a little bit because he does play at Arkansas. Um, you know, some of the other bigger name receivers play at the big time schools. You look at Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, but Traylon Burks, yes, he does play in the SEC, but Arkansas, you know, they're starting to get a little more re national recognition now as well. But you put on the tape of Traylon Burks, super exciting athlete and a guy that's just a really, really physical football player at that receiver position. We look at guys like Jamar Chase, Debo Samuel. They provide some of that same physicality that Traylon Burks displays on a week to week basis. I love this for Cleveland and they're getting an ultimate playmaker. For sure. And I think this is the perfect fit for Odell Beck, uh, excuse me, for Baker Mayfield uh, there in Cleveland, just because he's someone that you can get the ball to and have him make those plays for you, like you were alluding to, Austin. Really good fit alongside Baker Mayfield, assuming he is still the quarterback of the future for the Cleveland Browns. Pick 24, Baltimore Ravens here. And this is a nightmare for AFC North opponents. Edge David Ajabo here out of Michigan. I'm in love with this kid as a prospect because of his speed off the edge. And this becomes terrifying when you add that to Baltimore, who is really, really great at uh, developing and transforming edge rushers. You put him in a little bit more skill development set. How scary can he be? Yeah, David Ajabo, you put him in an established system like Baltimore. Watch out. This is this is absolutely a nightmare. Um, ends up falling 214. We've been a little higher than some of the other people in the mock draft community, but I, I believe that, you know, he, he's just this talented. He's a guy that can really get after the quarterback. Got completely overshadowed by Aiden Hutchinson this year, which is tough for him. However, you know, it allowed him more one-on-one -on -one opportunities, therefore leading to more production. But the Baltimore Ravens here, they're going to continue to improve that defense. Um, they're doing a really nice job balancing the selections between offense and defense here. Uh, getting David Ajabo, huge, huge get for them. And I overall just love the fit for them. Of course, they do need a little bit of help getting after the quarterback. And you'd assume with their cornerbacks getting healthy next season, the Ravens are going to be pushing to get back into Super Bowl contention rather quickly. 25, we've got the Philadelphia Eagles here. First pick of three in this mock draft. The Eagles are so well set up for the future. You start with linebacker Devin Lloyd, which is a little atypical of GM Howie Roseman there for the Philadelphia Eagles. Why is this the year for him to take a stab on linebacker? Oh, just because of how talented of a guy is, is currently out here and, you know, what you have on the roster. I think this is a good pick because he really helps out that second level of that defense. Uh, good in pass, uh, pass coverage. Um, really, really great at assessing uh, where the holes are, where to fill in the gaps. And that's just what he does. Uh, also good at block shedding. I mean, he, he's kind of the overall, you know, top tier package for a linebacker. That's why he's been, um, you know, getting mocked higher and higher. I, I love what he brings to the table. Uh, at that position in the Philadelphia Eagles, I think that's definitely where they're lacking. And, you know, it's nice because they have so many first round picks. You can be versatile in what you want to do, but you want to make sure before um, somebody else gets a chance at them. I mean, this is kind of more of the peak where I think he'll go. I, I think this is kind of like, you know, best case scenario for Devin Lloyd, but I think Philadelphia does very well with that pick. This is also best case scenario here for Philly. To me, I think he is the phenomenal fit onto their roster that they need to add. Helps them in both facets of defense, both run game, pass game. I like it a lot. And we're sticking with the Eagles here at pick 16. Now we're helping them in the pass game even more. We're going with cornerback Andrew Booth Jr. out of Clemson. Talk us through what this kid provides as well. Yeah, especially when you're competing with Dallas in the division, you have to be able to, you know, de defend the pass. I mean, that's just plain and simple. The Philadelphia Eagles get a really good opportunity to put themselves in a great position to win the division next year with these picks. Devin Lloyd is a humongous upgrade, but we also have to look at Andrew Booth Jr., a really, really good cover guy from Clemson. 
uh, brings a little bit of physicality as well. Uh, can really jam some of those receivers, especially that Cowboy team. I mean, they're pretty lethal overall in terms of what they have from an offensive package. But the Philadelphia Eagles can really counter that by, you know, really focusing defense this year. And that's what they're able to do with these two picks. You always have to match what's in your division in an effort to try and win the division. I think you nailed it here with the first two Eagles picks of three. And now at the halfway point here of this first round mock draft, I'm just going to remind you guys to use code UTILITY20, U-T-I-L-I-T-Y-2-0 at manscaped.com to get 20% off any order plus also free shipping. We would greatly appreciate for you to do that. They offer some really great products uh, and they're an awesome company. So make sure to go check them out. Use that code. Uh, link will be in the description for that as well. Moving into pick 17, Los Angeles Chargers here. And I think Chargers fans are going to smile knowing that the uh, A gap isn't going to be wide open anymore for running the football. Interior defensive lineman, Jordan Davis. He's a monster mauler in the run game. What do you like about him for the Chargers? I mean, this is the top tier running or rush defender, Jordan Davis. I mean, he will occupy multiple gaps himself. He is just that big of a dude. He's deceptively quick as well. Um, he's he's a really tough cover. The where I'd like to see him improve stamina wise is you know be able to stay on that on the field for those third downs. I think that's something that's you know definitely going to be a concern. That's maybe why he falls a little bit. I mean, he's a super super talented player but you do have to have some of those concerns, some of those questions. And, you know, if you're a team that, you know, feels that you can rotate a guy on that third down, you have to go ahead and do that. For me, the LA Chargers, this is a massive need in stopping the run. Jordan Davis, uh, one player can really affect, you know, just one facet of a game, like running the ball. I, it's going to make it really, really tough on teams, especially in division to run the football. Uh, you know, Denver is improving. They've got a really, really great rushing attack. We know what Josh Jacobs can do for the Raiders. Um, the Chiefs, you know, they're starting to figure out their run game a little bit more. Jerick McKinnon's been great for them uh, as of late. Looking at it, the LA Chargers here, uh, I love the pick for them. I, I think they're in a really good spot. Uh, there was no teams that I was like really scared of you know, before them to take Jordan Davis, but you know, they get their guy here at 17. I love him in the run game. I also think he can be beneficial in the pass game as well as a pocket pusher and very athletic uh, and deceptively quick for his size. Of course, he's a massive man, fills those gaps like you were talking about. And this is a great pickup for LA. As we slide into pick 18 here, we got the New Orleans Saints are, who are in a little bit of a cap purgatory right now and really need this draft to be a home run for them to really flesh out this roster and get all the talent back that they need. And you're going with wide receiver Garrett Wilson here out of Ohio State. They have a track record of drafting from Ohio State. Is that part of why you looked at this selection? Yeah, and I just think overall fit wise, he just makes the most sense with what's you know currently available on the board. Garrett Wilson definitely stood out at Ohio State, even with the other two very, very talented prospects on their roster. Garrett Wilson, uh, when it was go time, a lot of the times they did go to Garrett Wilson. I think, you know, from a route running perspective, very, very talented in that regard. Uh, and they also just need another receiver outside of Michael Thomas. I, I think we saw that this season. I uh, definitely struggled to, you know, sometimes to get it going through the air just because of the, you know, the quarterback issues and also overall receiving talent when Jameis Winston comes back ultimately, which is what I'm predicting. I think Garrett Wilson, Michael Thomas, Elvin Kamara, Jameis Winston, that's a really, really deadly overall group and one that's going to be insanely underrated going into next year. I like the receiving combination there, getting Michael Thomas back into the fold. You also add Garrett Wilson, of course. It's going to be the first year in quite some time without Sean Payton. So they're going to have some work to do. They have a lot of stuff to figure out there in New Orleans. Cap pur purgatory, head coach vacancy. It's going to be an interesting offseason, but I think Garrett Wilson is one really good way to at least go into next season having a great wide receiver added to your roster. Pick 19 here now. We are going to be looking at the Philadelphia Eagles again. And your guy, Tyler Linderbaum here, falls a little bit to the Eagles. They take advantage of it here. Part of this is probably based off of value, I'd assume. I know some people aren't in love with the idea of grabbing a center there in Philadelphia. They have Kelsey. They also uh, grab Dickerson. Why is this still well worth it? I mean, it's, it's his overall versatility. He can play guard. He can play center. And he's going to excel at both. And when you look at the offensive lineman in this class, I mean, he's right there in terms of, you know, where he's at with some of the top tier guys that were taken, you know, in that in that top 10. Uh, he falls a little bit to 19. The Philadelphia Eagles are smart. I mean, they, they know what they have to do here. I know that they might not feel that this is a need, but I think when you're able to plug and play a guy like Tyler Linderbaum, 
at that guard spot or the center spot, whatever they decide doing. And you really hedge yourself for the future, knowing that, you know, the time is ticking on Kelsey as a player. I love this for the Philadelphia Eagles. Some people may not like it, but I think this is truly what they're going to do. One of the most fun parts of draft season is evaluating the importance of need versus the importance of draft value versus the importance of fit. And I think Tyler Linderbaum here really fits well. And I think he's someone whose draft value here is great, even if the need isn't massive. Uh, and for Philadelphia, I still think this is a home run selection and a home run draft. Pick 20, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers and a fourth quarterback goes off the board here. Desmond Ritter reappears back into the top 32 selections. And I think you're pretty excited about this kid from everything I know about you and everything I know about him as a dual threat quarterback. What does he offer to Pittsburgh? I think this is a guy that's being really, really underrated throughout the process. Um, you know, he, he's that true dual threat quarterback, a guy that can really make a lot of plays happen on the ground. And when you look at where the NFL is shifting to, it's it's kind of that that guy. Uh, you don't want that, you know, still guys. That's the, the guy that's just going to sit in the pocket and, and really not be able to take off. They're kind of getting flushed out of the league. If we look at the, the quarterback position, a lot of it is really now predicated on athleticism, extending plays. And when you look at the top of the league, pretty much all of those guys can do that. So really crucial to me, Desmond Ritter, you know, when you watch him, he provides everything you need in an NFL level quarterback. I think he should start to get more first round consideration once again. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going through a transition. They have a talented roster, just need a little bit of direction at that quarterback spot. Nothing that they have currently in the roster excites me. So I think Desmond Ritter is a true plug and play guy. He has all the tools in the world to really succeed, even starting as a rookie. I, I think this this uh, pairing to me makes way too much sense. I think so as well. Pittsburgh does need to evaluate that quarterback spot. And if they can't find a guy in free agency, uh, a guy like you know Aaron Rodgers, for example, if he does find his way out of Green Bay, they need to find a, a quarterback for the future. Desmond Ritter, he could really be that 20th overall. Pick 21, we're looking here now at the New England Patriots, and you have wide receiver Drake London out of USC going, I know you love this kid. Give us a quick breakdown on why he fits in New England. High volume guy, which is something that they're really lacking at the receiver spot. Uh, big frame and a true red zone threat, which is also that something that they're missing in that wide receiver room. Everything that they're lacking, he's checking the boxes on. So to me, it makes a lot of sense for them to go ahead and select him. Some people might be scared. You know, I always preface this and talk about it, but the whole Nikhil Harry thing, I don't think they should shy away. I think they're going to take a chance on a guy like Drake London. Um, one of those guys that has high upside, you know, considering what his physicals look like, especially, you know, him being 6'5 and having an insane catch radius. Love this for the Patriots. You got to get a little more uh, dynamic on offense. They, they're going to continue to work on that at the receiver position. Uh, they did a nice job patching things together this year, but you got to continue to build that wide receiver room. It's absolutely crucial for the, su the success of uh, Mac Jones. Yeah, this is a phenomenal pickup for them. I really love Drake London. He was the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year despite missing nearly half the season. Uh, and that goes to show how productive he was in his time that he did play. He was a huge part of that USC Trojans offense near the beginning of the year. Uh, and I think he's going to be a big part of New England's offense if they do make this selection on draft night. Pick 22, we got the Raiders, and we're sticking with a wide receiver here, going with Jamison Williams, who, of course, did have that knee injury in the national title game. Obviously, you're not super concerned about that, especially when you look at the Raiders. They made their new head coach hire, Josh McDaniels. How bad do they need wide receiver play? Yeah, I mean, they, they got to continue to improve there. Uh, Henry Ruggs was that speedster. You are replacing him with another true speedster. Jamison Williams coming off that injury. It's going to take a little bit of time for him to really get back in the groove, and we'll see how long it takes him to recover. But when you look at him as just a raw player, uh, there, there's so much that he can do for you. Really can stretch the ball down the field. That, that's kind of what the Raiders are missing ever since Henry Ruggs left. Uh, really having that, that true breakout guy, a guy that can really – uh, explode, uh, you know, for 70 yards. That's what he brings to this offense. And I think they take another shot at it. I, I love Jamison Williams. Unfortunate what happened with the injury, but I don't think his stock's going to take as big of a hit as people think. I, I agree with you. I think his uh, film's going to speak for itself. And I think what he can be once he's healthy should keep him in that first round range. And I think the Raiders would be better down the road with this selection. Moving on, we got the Arizona Cardinals here, and you got Kyer Elam out of Florida going into Arizona. Very athletic cornerback out of Florida. What else do you like about this kid? I, I love, he's got really good length. Uh, he's tall. 
uh, a guy that's not really afraid to jam a receiver at the line as well. He he likes to use that length, uh, really press receivers along the sideline. Um, he's also underrated as a tackler, something that I, I picked up more recently. I love this for the Arizona Cardinals. They, you know, in the division that they're in, they, they got to be more sound at that corner spot. They've made some strides defensively in some of their, their more recent picks. However, I, I think you got to hit on a corner uh, to really maximize that defense. Especially when you have a guy like Cooper Cup in division, you have to find ways to deal with them. Kyer Elam, I think, is going to be a better option than a lot of other teams are going to be able to throw at him down the road. Moving on now to 24, we're staying with a cornerback here. Trent McDuffie goes to the Dallas Cowboys. I think this is a really phenomenal value with him here in the 20s. He's been very sound in coverage. How badly does Dallas need to make a selection like this one? Yeah, I think uh, corner is going to be a, a huge concern for them heading into the offseason. Once again, the Dallas Cowboys can do a lot of different things. Uh, there's going to be a shakeup on that defense, you know, money-wise. Uh, they had already started that process uh, by cutting Jalen Smith. Now they come back, they select a guy like Trent McDuffie, one of the more underrated players in the entire class. Uh, when you look at him from the, the standpoint of what he showed at college, uh, he's almost top 10 level talent in terms of what you saw from him. Now you always have to you know, have a little bit of projection. What does he bring from an overall frame standpoint? What's his upside? And that's where it gets really tough as an evaluator trying to figure out you know, how to balance that. You know, obviously great in college, um, you know, little bit uh, in terms of size wise, doesn't compare as well to some of these other corners in the class. However, Trent McDuffie, tremendous player. I think that's something that Dallas has to consider, especially with him falling right into their lap. Even with some of those questions about long-term projections, Cowboys fan, Cowboy fans should be extremely excited still because their window starts right now. They're a team that's good enough to win a title, especially when you add in a player like Trent McDuffie. He can really help contain teams in the passing game. I think he's a massive upgrade over Anthony Brown. Of course, we'll see if Trayvon Diggs can have another legendary season in terms of forcing takeaways. Uh, but the Cowboys are dangerous, and Cowboys fans should be excited about this pick. 25 here, the Buffalo Bills will go with wide receiver Chris Olave. And this may be a little bit of a foreshadowing to uh, their need for a wide receiver on the roster. Emmanuel Sanders, he is on a one-year deal. He's probably not coming back. You also look at Cole Beasley, who's well into his 30s now. You probably need another guy there, even with Gabriel Davis, his performance against the Chiefs. And we know what Stephon Diggs as a third wideout makes the Bills really dangerous for Josh Allen. Am I right about that? Yeah, watch out. If the Bills end up taking a guy like Chris Olave at this point in the draft, it's going to be really, really scary. I think Gabriel Davis slots in very nicely as a long-term three. Chris Olave is going to be a really, really great complement to Stephon Diggs. Two very, very sound uh, route runners as well. So kind of collectively looking at it, they, they can really break you down at any part of the field. It doesn't matter if it's in the short game, the long game. Chris Olave makes this offense nearly <clears throat> unguardable. So I like it for them. I think you can consider other things on the defense as well. But to me, I like Chris Olave here. Uh, th this would be insane if Buffalo got their hands on him. I can see it now. Josh Allen uncorking a deep ball right down the seam and Chris Olave running right underneath of it and taking it to the house for a 75 yard touchdown to start a drive at some point in his career. I, I could see that happening. Buffalo would be much better offensively with the addition of Olave. Sliding in to pick 26, Darian Kendrick goes here out of Georgia. You have him going to the Tennessee Titans. I really, really like this kid as a prospect. I think he's one of the more underrated cornerbacks throughout this entire process. We've seen him at Clemson, seen him this past year at Georgia when he won a national title. What do you like about Darian Kendrick here for Tennessee? It's really perplexing on Darian Kendrick considering he was just playing on a, on a championship team, right? Therefore, guys are elevated higher um, because they had more national exposure. Darian Kendrick just doesn't get that same love. I, I really have a really hard time understanding why that is. I mean, he played phenomenally this year and he also was so, so good at Clemson as well. It's really tough to, to really wrap my, my head around it, but Tennessee, uh, you know, they addressed corner last year. I think they're going to dip again in the well, continue to improve that defense. Mike Vrabel is going to make that point of emphasis heading into this off season. I, I'd like this pick for the Tennessee Titans for that, for that matter. Um, you know, it, it's tough to find, you know, a guy later on as talented as Darian Kendrick, uh, they're going to pull the trigger here. Right. Tennessee, you have to be analyzing the landscape of the AFC. Right now, you're looking at the Kansas City Chiefs, Buffalo Bills, and the Cincinnati Bengals, and they're all passing offenses and offenses that have a ton of wide receiver threats. It's going to be difficult to contain them. You need more help at that cornerback spot. Even though you took Caleb Farley last year, come back in, get Darian Kendrick, get even more talented, and really try and match up better with some of those AFC rivals. 
Moving on to pick 27, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here. You have them going with wide receiver Jahan Dotson out of Penn State. Do you have one Nittany Lion replacing the other? Yeah, I mean, it's it all comes down to Chris Godwin's contract. I don't know if they're going to be able to get a deal done. There's a lot of things in the air for this Tampa Bay organization. Uh, we don't really know exactly what's going on. Uh, looking at Jahan Dotson, though, fills a major need right away. Uh, really alleviate some of that pressure off of Mike Evans. And you look at what they had on the roster this year in the playoffs, they just weren't good enough. Tyler Johnson did not play well in the postseason. Scotty Miller, we have to you know have an overall question of what his ceiling is as, a, as an actual player. I think he can be productive in, in certain situations, um, which is possible, but you need to have a little more upside in what you can bring to your offense. Jahan Dotson does that. Tampa Bay, they, they got to be on their toes. They got to be ready for the next chapter. And I think Jahan Dotson really uh, extends that window of competitiveness. I think he definitely does make this offense better. I like what he would bring into that offense in general. And now as we move on to the Green Bay Packers, they get phenomenal value here on a guy like Charles Cross, who we've had him mocked all over the place as well. Sometimes outside the top 10, sometimes inside the top 10. And now here all the way down at 28, maybe a little bit because of his one dimensionalness, more of a pass protector than a run blocker. Do you think that does hurt his stock a little bit? Uh, you know, I, I, it's really tough to gauge where Charles Cross is going to go because we kind of get into that that medium section of the draft where uh, he didn't go in, in that top 10. And then, you know, you, you had some questions later on, but Charles Cross going to Green Bay would be terrifying. I don't know if this is, uh, I don't know if he's going to last this long. It's really tough considering how talented he is, but just with how the draft fell, team needs value. Um, he ends up falling to Green Bay. Absolutely love this for them. And, and could be a huge, huge building block along this offensive line. And once again, the new era for the Packers, it begins now. Uh, and that's kind of where we're sitting at with this team. Right. Charles Cross would be the obvious selection for the Green Bay Packers if he's on the board here. And this isn't something that's out of the question. Falls like this do happen. Consider Christian Derrissaw last year for the Vikings. They would have taken him in the top 15 with their pick before they traded out with the New York Jets. And then, of course, he falls into the mid-20s for them anyway. That was a phenomenal outcome for Minnesota. And here at Green Bay finds similar luck with Charles Cross falling to them in this mock draft. Pick 29. We're now looking at the Miami Dolphins here. And this offensive tackle, Nicholas Pettit Freer out of Ohio State. Another pass protector. Not as good in the run game, but really, really good pass protection type of tackle. What does he bring to Miami? They were pretty reliant on the pass this year. Uh, you know, just considering with what the running back situation is, I wouldn't be surprised if they went into this draft and looked at the running back spot, but you, you have to have a guy that can consistently be a good, really, really good pass protector. He graded out very well all year long uh, in terms of pass protection. I like this for the Miami Dolphins. They're going to continue to build that offensive line. Uh, they're a competitive roster. They need to keep it up. And I think you have to draft a tackle at this point. I definitely think so as well. You got to protect Tua Tagovailoa. You play him right at right tackle. That's perfect. There, protect his blind side. And you move on forward with the Miami Dolphins being a slightly better team next season. Pick 30, Kansas City Chiefs here. And you have them going with safety. Jaquan Brisker, of course, a tough loss to the Cincinnati Bengals in a great game. Uh, they had outlasted the Bills, lost to the Bengals. And now you have them going with the safety to replace Tyron Matthew, I presume. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, a direct correlation with the expected loss of a Tyron Matthew. There's been rumors of it all year long. And I think especially with that that uh, really, really gut-wrenching loss uh, to the Cincinnati Bengals, they, he ends up leaving in free agency. Insert Jaquan Brisker, big-time hitter. Uh, that's probably his best trait, a guy that will absolutely pop you. Um, really, really good in, in run support as well. That's something that you know Kansas City needs to be even better on in the back end. But Jaquan Brisker, a really, really good developmental player. And, and for KC, I mean, they, they've had some issues at the safety spot, um, and they can't afford to get any weaker there. Tyran Matthew out in search of Juan Brisker. Um, I love this for Kansas City. I think Brisker makes a lot of sense here for Steve Spagnuolo's defense. We know he likes to dial up blitzes uh, and get after the quarterback. And when you add a safety who can play up in the box, it makes your defense disguise a little bit easier. Uh, you have a guy who can get after the quarterback. If you send him on delayed blitzes, he can play around the line of scrimmage, but can also play a little bit of that deep safety if you need him to. Uh, and he's going to make the middle of the field a little bit of a dangerous location for opposing wide receivers. Pick 31 now, the Detroit Lions here. And this is phenomenal value. Lions fans, leave a like if you're excited for this potential outcome because N'Kobe Dean out of Georgia here, one of the best players on that Georgia defense. You have him going 31st overall to the Lions, who have now really improved their front seven. 
what do you like about this kid? Nicobe Dean, uh, it's best list, best to really describe him as a heat seeking missile, super athletic linebacker, shoots the gaps very well, um, continue to get better in, in, in passing coverage. However, his strength is in, in the run game. I mean, you look at him, flies around the defense, always is around the ball. That's the thing that's really important for a linebacker, especially with where he's going to be playing. Uh, you got to be around the ball constantly, got to be making some big plays. That's what he does on a consistent basis. Huge key to success for that Georgia defense. I love this for the Lions. Once again, you're improving that front seven. Watch out. This defense is getting scary, scary good, especially with N'Kobe Dean falling to 31. I love this addition for Dan Campbell's Lions. Super exciting. Lions fans, again, leave a like if you are excited for that. And now as we move into our last pick, I just want to urge everyone to leave a like, subscribe as well if you're new. Use, you, use code UTILITY20 at manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free shipping on your purchase. And now here we are, Cincinnati Bengals. What a phenomenal season, but it's all about protecting Joe Burrow a little bit more, elevating what this offense can be with a little bit more protection. And you're going with Trevor Penning out of UNI. What do you like about Trevor Penning? Uh, really brings that prototypical size. Uh, once again, UNI doesn't get a lot of notoriety, consistent tackle there. And the Cincinnati Bengals have to address this offensive line. We've seen it in multiple playoff games where they just, they kind of get out manhandled, especially that Tennessee game. I mean, that really co almost cost them the game. Joe Burrow played an amazing game despite the constant pressure in his face. But if you want to win at the high level and be a consistent, you know, contender, and we knew this going in, Cincinnati's got to draft an offensive lineman. It's got to be in the first round. Uh, they can't afford to wait in that second round, in my opinion, with the run on tackle that we could be seeing. Right, Trevor Penning here fits the bill at the end of the first round for the Cincinnati Bengals. They've had a great season so far, and this selection could really help them again next season get back to this level of success. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's video. Again, if you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe as well if you're new. Use code utility20 at manscaped.com to get 20% off plus free shipping. That'd be awesome. They're a really great company, sell really great products. Um, we're super happy to be partnered with them. Thanks again so much, and we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.